All right, I need to move this over to the other side of the shed so I can start working on it more. This is the 1990 Honda Accord. And I've got my jumper cables here. The battery that was in it is in the shed. Uh, it was bulged out on the sides, on two sides. So I didn't think it would be safe to use. I did put it on the charger in there temporarily, but it didn't seem like it wanted to take a charge. So I set it to the side, but I did have another battery that I put on the charger and it's charged uh, probably five times and has been doing pretty good. So I'm gonna get that battery out of the shed and bring it around here. And I'm just gonna jump her between the battery and you know, these uh, right here, just to uh, see if I can get the car started. If I can get the car started, I'm gonna move it. Uh, I'll be bringing my air pump around here and airing up these tires too, because cars move so much better when the tires have air in them. Uh, but if I can get it going good enough, uh, of course I have to put the battery in it, but if I get it going good enough, I'll, I'll, I'll run it down to the gas station, fill up the gas tank, and also uh, to the car wash and give it a good, good wash and scrub. Um, it's gonna take a lot of work. Um, I've got a lot to do to it, but let me get busy. Okay. So, yeah, this, this one is the one that was in it, in the, the black Honda Accord. This is the battery I've had on the charger. And if you look down the side, see how nice and flat this one is? And then you look down the side of this one, you can actually see a, a bulge. Can you tell, tell how there's a bulge in it? And, uh, the other side is the same way. So this one, the one that was in the black Honda Accord, I'm not gonna use that. But this one, I mean, it's still got a, still doing, I put it, I just hooked it up to the battery just to kind of give it a quick charge just to see. And uh, it seems to be doing good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off. There we go. And then disconnect this. All right. Take my voltometer. Put it on 20 volts DC. Oh, and then I'm gonna check between the two of these. Let's see. 14, whoop. Anyway, did you see it? 14.4. So hopefully, hopefully this, it's a 12 volt battery, but it needs to hold. It needs to be able to crank over an engine is kind of what I'm trying to say. All right, so let me grab that and take that out to the car. Whew, that's one heavy battery. But anyway, I got it out here. Brought my fault on meter. And the uh, reason I brought this is to, to kind of keep an eye on the battery. So let's see, you know, if the uh, car is dragging the battery down. But once I get the car started uh, and the battery's not connected to it, then I use my ohm meter to check across, you know, these, these battery connectors here to, uh, to measure the voltage that the alternator is putting out. And that's a good test to let me know if the alternator is working. All right, I just realized I don't have the key. I need to go get the key. All right, I went into the house to get the key and uh, found out that there was a meal ready for me to eat. So I, I took my time and I sat down and ate a good meal. Man, it was good. So I brought my tripod out. I'm gonna set my camera up on the tripod 
and that way y'all can watch me uh, hook up the uh, hook that up and then see if I can get this thing started one of the problems with doing uh, work or videoing the work outside is background noise in the distance I can hear vehicles cars and way off in the distance is somebody freaking playing a radio or something I hope y'all can't hear that I wouldn't want to get a strike on YouTube because somebody one of my neighbors decides he wants to listen to rock music I, I can't tell if that's somebody in their garage playing a guitar or sounds like drums as well I don't know somebody might be practicing like a band practicing somewhere but let me get busy on this I need to hook up this battery when you hook up batteries always hook up red red and black to black right black is the negative red is the po oh sorry got that backwards here black is the negative red is the positive so on this right here notice that right there is red I don't know if you can see that or not but that's red this is red so hook up that, that. this is black because that's ground this is black so black to black see that that thing's painted for some stupid reason but anyway it's got a good connection black to black and make sure they're not touching anything else uh, for, for touching each other either because you, you definitely don't want the uh, sparks to fly <laughs> all right now I'm gonna hook it up to the battery here well, let me look at that can you see that oh yeah you can see that good black to black red to red black is negative red is positive so black on the negative red on the positive Alright. <clears throat> Alright, that's stable. I brought two keys, not sure which one's which. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in the car, see if this thing will turn over and start. So let me get in there and do that. Took a while, didn't it? This thing's been sitting for a good while. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, bolt on meter and I'm gonna check it and see. I'm gonna see what the voltages are in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the battery from the car. I'm going to see if it keeps running. And I'm going to check the, the voltage on the, 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 the battery leads going back to the car. Alright, 
so I disconnected that, which means the alternator is providing all the electricity for the car to operate on. If, I don't know if you heard it, but whenever I disconnected this, the, the car sounded a little different, didn't it? But it's because it was working hard to put charge back on this. So, after I check it with the, the voltmeter to see what kind of voltage it's putting out, then I'm going to hook this battery back up to it, let it just sit and charge. Out good voltage and the car is operating without the battery in it, which is a very good indication that the alternator works great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this battery and move it. I'm going to see if I can get this car moved. I got the car moved. Wonderful. 
<laughs> Look at that. You can see where where it was sitting. Look at all that mold. You know what they call that? <sighs> that white stuff. That, I believe, is what they call mycelium, which is kind of a fungal growth. So when you got mycelium in your dirt and everything, that means that it's a good, nice, healthy soil, which is kind of crazy. It almost looks like frost, but it's, it's almost 60 degrees today. And it's not melting. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I don't want that stuff in my hands, but it's not frost. It looks like my mycelium. I need that. I need a bunch of that in my compost. All right. I got this car moved. I'm going to be working on this one to get it on the road. And, uh, and then I'm going to work on that one. This one right here needs a uh, head gasket replaced it's uh water was getting into uh the oil and the uh, gas gasoline mixture so it was all screwed up i had taken this one to a couple of uh like three mechanic shops around town they said heck no they ain't gonna touch it because they said it's a pain in the ass these jeep liberties jeep liberty sport they said the engine on this is a pain in the ass so i'm gonna have to do all that work myself which will be be fine because whenever I get it done this thing will be back on the road and be a nice vehicle have it all nice and cleaned up all right I need, I need to get this stuff back in the shed all right this thing's still purring away doesn't sound so bad now when I first started it up man this sounded horrible uh, you can tell it really needs washed <laughs> Look at the snail trails, where the snails have been eating. That's it. Then the snails go back and forth and eat the moss. Ain't that something? <laughs> Even up on the windshield. Can you see it? Where the snails have gone back and forth eating. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm gonna get busy on this thing. And uh, I feel really good that I got it started. I need to air up the tires and uh, I don't have the tags and the registration for it at the moment, but I'm gonna have to do that. I get the tires and er, tires. I get the tires aired up and then get the tags and registration done. And where, where I live, um, I know a lot of people don't live in rural areas, but where I live in the county, they don't really care if the car or truck even runs. They give you tags and registration. It'll be a legal vehicle to be on the road in. They don't even care if it has exhaust or whatever, because we're out way out in the country, out, out away from the cities. Uh, who knows, someday as population grows, maybe they'll change that. But for now, I don't have to worry about it. So all of my older vehicles can be on the road and operating and not have to pass the uh, city's emissions, um, which is a very good thing because I think every one of my vehicles have the engine light on constantly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end this video here. And uh, then I'm going to... Whenever I get back out here doing more work to this, uh, I'll do some more videos on it. But this one's got a lot of work needs done. So wish me luck on it.